this video will show how to use and set up Apache Maven toolchains for a project. The toolchains ID is to configure a way for plugins to discover the JDK or other tools which are used during the build. This makes it possible to run your build, Maven itself, with a particular version of the JDK, but compiles and runs your tests with a different JDK. We have set up here an example project which contains a simple class which is called function and two different kind of tests. One unit tests, which ends with the postfix test.java, and as well on an integration test, which ends with an it.java. Let us take a look into the IDE and the POM file here. So as you can see, the class here, fraction, is not very special. It's a simple class which has only a single method, an equals and a hash code. This is just for demonstration purposes to have some something to test here. Now let us take a look into the tests which I have set up here. There is the unit tests, which uses JUnit Jupyter as a testing framework here. Um, I have decided to use the enable on .re annotation here to activate a particular test based on the JDK which it, the test is running into. I have used three different ones here. So I have one for Java 8, one for Java 11, and one for Java 17. As you can see here, this is for Java 8, 11, and 17. The tests are exactly containing exactly the same code. There is no difference here, just for demonstration purpose that you see which one will be executed here. In the before each method, I have uh, identified and get the property for the Java vendor to print out the information about the Java vendor of the JDK which is running here. So now let us take a look into the integration test. It looks more or less like the same. I have a book before each method extracting the Java vendor information from the running JDK or more accurate under which the unit or in this case the integration test is exactly running here and also enabled the different methods here just by using a different name here to make that make it easier to separate and identify which one has been executed. I'm also using the system of print line here to print something on the console to make it more easier to understand what is happening here. So the same here, I have one for Java 8, one for Java 11, and one for Java 17 here. So now let us take a look into the POM file. The POM file contains the usual things here like group ID, artifact ID versions, and so on. I have configured the source and encoding. I'm using compiler source and target to make it sure that this is producing uh, as a target the class files for Java 8 runtime in this case. Then I have defined the dependency management. I'm using JUnit BOM uh, as a JUnit Jupyter um, testing framework. The SJ for assertions here for my taste here. I activated the two dependencies, the JUnit Jupyter engine to activate the execution of the test. J, J core for the assertions here. Both of them are in the scope test because I only use these dependencies in my unit or integration tests. Then I have to define all the plugins I need to use here within the build and define them by the plugin management to be sure that each execution, even in, in the future, uh, it will be executing exactly the same with the same result. As you can see here, the Surefire and the Failsafe plugin are both configured using the skip UTs as well as the skip ITs as a property here to make it easier to skip either uh, the integration test or the unit test. This has been explained in a previous video in episode 2. I have already added the, the Maven toolchains plugin but not activating that at all because I only have added in that in the plugin management. I also have bound the Maven failsafe plugin to the integration test phase as well the, the verify goal into the appropriate lifecycle phase. Detailed explanation can be looked up into the episode two. So what I can do is clean verify. Let us do that as first without saying something here. The first thing what you can see is uh, we are doing the same, same things here, the clean plugin, the resources plugin, the compiler plugin, and also things like that. We are compiling one. Uh, the test resources is just trying to compile some, uh, copying something, but doesn't find anything because this resource directory doesn't exist because we don't have no, no resources using in that test here. 
test compile shows up compiling to source file because we have two different things like the, the unit test as well as the integration test. Now you can see the execution of the unit tests in this case here. What you can see as well here is that first we are running the enabled JRE17 and the Java vendor is printed out as Azul Systems Incorporated. And you see two other tests are being skipped here. The same identification is done here with the uh, integration test with Maven failsafe, more or less exactly the same. It's running IT enabled on JRE17 and skipped two other tests. So why is that happening here? So the simple reason is because I'm running Maven with at the or building and running and compiling with Java 17 here. That means my build itself means my runtime for my Maven Apache Maven build here is running with Java 17 with uh, a particular JDK vendor, in this case Azul Systems. As you can see here, the runtime is coming from a particular directory. As you can see, I'm using SDK man for configuring the different JDK versions and, and set up things like that. So you can see that is exactly the version which I'm running that. That means also, if I don't do a supplemental setup, as at that point, I run also the compilation as well as the execution of the test. I'm running them with these, this particular JDK here. So that means I can't change or check, for example, if it's really needed to use a different JDK to check and run my tests on. For example, I want to make sure that a particular issue in a particular JDK version will be checked by using my unit or integration test. That can't be done. Only if I would like to run my whole build with that particular JDK. But that's sometimes not necessary or even not possible. So that's the reason to use Apache Maven toolchain. So now let us take a look how that toolchain has to be set up here. To set up tool chains correctly, you have to do several things. The first thing is that you have to activate the Maven toolchain plugin in your POM. We will take a look here in that, as well to configure the toolchain uh, configuration, where to find the particular tools, or in this case, we are just demonstrating that by using different JDKs, how to set up them. So I have set up here a file which is called toolchains. XML file that usually should be put into the user's home directory.m2 slash like the settings file, but you can also use that in a particular directory uh, and give that on the command line as well. So let us take a look. What you can see is the toolchain XML file contains uh, for each uh, entry of the tool a complete part like toolchain start of the tag, end of the tag, slash toolchain, and the type um, is usually the JDK type that can be different, for example, uh, an execution tool or whatever, but I'm demonstrating that here only with the JDK here. What it also needed to give here is which kind of uh, things that it's providing. There are different things. There are only, I'm using here only the version and the vendor because that's the most important things the version and the vendor, Zulu, that means the vendor for Azul. And then you have to add a configuration part and giving the JDK home. And you see I'm using here absolute path here, and that is necessary. So I have defined a JDK type with version 8 and vendor Zulu. I have also done that with 8, that's Liberica from Amazon. And also done that with the JDK 11 from Azul as well, with the version 11, and also with the JDK 17 from Azul uh, for, for just demonstrating purposes that it is possible to use in the different JDK versions as well. So now let us switch to the POM file, how to configure the tool chains correctly. There are several things you need to be aware of. So you have to define the version and vendor to select the appropriate JDK for the compiler plugin. I have decided to use a property for that, and I have defined them in the property section of my POM here. I have defined to use toolchain, the version, I could change that name, I have just selected that one, 
and the vendor. In this case, I have just decided to use Liberica first. So let us take a look, continue to, to look on that. It is also necessary to make a selection for Shorefire as well as a Fadesafe plugin. That can be done in the exact same way. You can do that and configure that as described into as in the compiler plugin. So doing the same thing for Fadesafe plugin. These three parts are very important because you need to make sure that the compilation is done with correct JDK, as well the execution of the unit and or integration test should be running and executed with the correct JDK. What is also necessary to activate the toolchain plugin, and that can be easily done by using and binding that index, put it into a usual block, not only defining that here as I did before here in the plugin management, I would like to activate that plugin, and that must be in a usual area. Only the configuration is needed to give here. That's absolutely enough. The rest will be automatically done. So what we can now identify and see if we like to do that, the first thing, you know, going back to the command line. So as you can see, the used JDK, which is used by Maven itself, hasn't been changed. But what I can see is now, if you let us take a look and start with only running the, up to the tests here. Okay, I have done something wrong here. Uh, okay, I have uh, used 8 and Liberica. So the point is, if you take a look, 8 and Liberica, so either I have changed the name or used a wrong name. Let me take a look. Ah, okay. I'm using the wrong toolchains because I have already a toolchain configuration in my home directory. That means I have M2 and there is a toolchains file already. And if I don't say anything, this toolchain file will be automatically read if I don't ex uh, give a supplemental option to identify and read that from a different location. So if you take a look, and then you see there is something with JDK 9 or something. Um, and that's exactly the problem here. If you take a look here, the request specification did not match because it's trying to find that on JDK 9, which is of course wrong because that configuration isn't correct at the moment. So now we have to define here uh, tool chains XML. So that means I will use the tool chains configuration from my local directory here. And then I start the build. And then you see first that it is starting and executing. But then you see some differences here. At the compiler plugin, you see a difference. Supplemental output. The tool chain in Maven compiler plugin. As you see the JDK, and then you see a selection of that selected JDK here. As you have expected, or maybe not, that's exactly what I have uh, selected based on the properties. That means the compilation will be done exactly with this JDK here. Furthermore, the test compilation will be doing with the same configuration as well. And more, and, and or the next very important part here is that the show file plugin is picking up that correct JDK which can be identified by the supplemental output toolchain in Maven Show Plugin. And then you see the use selected JDK is also the 80333 Liberica. What is also interesting now that the unit test is being executed, only one is executed, correct, but not the one of F as before, because the first execution we had executed the uh, test, which is based on JDK uh, 17. And, and in this case, we are executing the, te the test, which is enabled by using in a Java runtime environment 8 or JDK 8 here. What you can also see is that the vendor, which is read by the property, is Bellsoft in, the, in such cases and not, if I print out the information here, not Azul anymore. And then you see that means that there is a difference between running the Maven build itself or its plugins and executing the tests and the compilation here. So now I can change this configuration here if I would like to um, execute with a different JDK, for example. 
and run my tests with, for example, a different um, JDK vendor, for example. So the only thing I have to do is to check my properties and then override them via the command line. So I can decide and say the version 8 is, is just fine, but I would like to use the 8.0.33.2 from Azul instead. So I have to override um, the version. Uh, sorry, Azul chain 8 vendor Zulu, which is the same here. So you can see the vendor is Zulu, the version is 8. Um, it should be enough to just override the vendor in such case because the version hasn't been changed and is the same as before. So I will do the same here and then just rerunning the tests here. And now you see exactly the same, same output, but there is a difference. Now we have used and selected a different JDK here, which is 80332-Zulu instead. That is also being selected on the, in the test and the unit test. If we scroll back to the previous one, there you see exactly the difference here, 80333-LibRCA, which stands for Liberica. We can do that also for all the integration tests if we change just to use verify instead. And that means we are also executing the integration test. And that means works exactly the same. The most difference here is we are using the integration test and we are only using the enabled IT based on running on the JDK 8. So now let us uh, make a different version here, for example, 11. I have to recheck if I have a correct correct configuration for that JDK. So I have to check. I have something about 11 and Zulu. So I have the vendor Zulu and the version 11. So I can run my build with a Zulu's JDK, but JDK 11 instead. I will clean up that here and just run the test instead here. So what you can see is that it doesn't work because I've been using this wrong property. So cleaning up here, using the tool chain version should be named a bit different, but you see the ID here behind that. And now it's using a different JDK here for compiling, for test compiling, as well for executing the tests and also, you see a big difference here. The vendor has changed to Azul systems, which is correct. But it's most important that we are now executing only the single test, which is based on enabling under JDK 11 here. Let us take a look back into the unit test. So that test is not executed, but this test is executed. Enabled JRE 11. So we can change that and make that possible to use different JDKs with different um, providers or vendors or something like that and make here a clear difference between the one which is running Maven itself, that means runtime, and which is used to compile or execute your tests or unit tests as well as integration tests. But it's clear to say that using Maven tool chains is only really necessary if you have the requirement to test on different JDKs, either on different, different JDK versions or on different JDK vendors, if that's really necessary. Most of the time you don't need it. Um, it's much more easier to use uh, the release option of the more modern versions of JDK, for example, JDK 11, 17, and so on. Have a good time. Bye.